Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I am once again looking at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. So for today's video, I have randomly chosen the Albatross, a jump ship, which is this lovely thing right here, featuring hydrogen thrusters and atmospheric thrusters. It's got the Gatling guns all over it, and it's just perfect for your space exploration. So let's start by going around the outside. The first thing we can see at the very front of the ship is a camera, which is great because the cockpit is situated slightly away from the window, so it gives you a nice view of what's coming up against you. So as we come around the side, we can see we're using the uh, default Space Engineers block skin, which I have completely forgotten about. I've complained about it all the time until the skin pack came, and then I just forgot it was there, but it does look great and give it that feeling that you've been in space for a very long time. So we've got these lovely nobbles coming along the side here, which gives it that little bit of extra detail, breaking up the completely flat red side. Hidden inside one of them is the door to get inside, but there is another way of going in. Below, we can see we have a spotlight facing down, so you can light up the area around you as you attempt to land on a station or a planet. As we move along to the side here, we can see we've got some more hydrogen thrusters sticking out of everywhere. We've got our first Gatling gun on the side, and we can see one slightly above. And then we come to the hangar doors, which allows us to store up to, I'd say, about five small ships, or perhaps four small ones and one slightly medium-ish one inside your ship, if you want to jump great distances and have mini fighters to deploy. Along the top there, we can see some more hydrogen thrusters, and below, we can see the landing gear to keep us nice and safe, and not to bump into any of our thrusters or guns on the bottom. Moving along there, we got some more fancy block works, using the uh, greyish coloured blocks to break up the red solid grid. Even more Gatling guns, a connector on the side for you to connect up to a, perhaps a larger refuelling ship, or the hydrogen tanker in case you ran out of hydrogen. And then moving along, we get to the very back where we have like a little thruster pod there. So that's our reverse speed. And then coming all the way around to the back, we've got these lovely large hydrogen thrusters all surrounded around by half finished blocks, which gives it that little bit of extra something than just having them stick at the back there. As we come around to the top, we can see we've got lots and lots of Gatling turrets. Yes, this thing is going to destroy pretty much any small ship that comes close to it without you even lifting a finger. We've got the antenna there, which has been carefully hidden away there, so you don't have to bump into anything if you try to fit into a small area. All the hydrogen thrusters there for some nice downward thrust. Another Gatling gun. And then coming around to here, we can see even more thrusters to stop us in a reasonable amount of time. Coming down and then below, we can see we've got even more detail. Yes, this one has not skipped out on the detail on the bottom of the ship. This time, however, we can see the atmospheric thrusters. Yes, we've got a couple of large ones here, just to ensure you don't accidentally crash into a planet if you go too close and enter an atmosphere. We then see these spotlights, which are below the landing gear. Even more hydrogen thrusters. Some more landing gear, and then a couple more Gatling guns to finish it off. But that is it for the outside. For using the standard Space Engineers blocks and no mods, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? It's a really well-made ship. I'm quite jealous, because my ships never turn out like this. But anyway, now it's time for me to get into my character, and we're going to have a little tour around. So this is the main cockpit. We have got two passenger seats and the main cockpit, but I'll come back to that functionality a little bit later on. We do have an LCD screen there telling you your hydrogen fuel and your cargo space and the ammunition for your turrets. On the opposite side, we have got the LCD screen showing you the floor plan of your ship. And then we have a few options of where we can go. Left and right are basically going to be the same on both sides, but we do have this fancy little air vent here. We can see an air vent has been hidden up there, all nicely tucked away behind a window. Coming through the right hand door, we can see we've got this lovely use of a ramp to give us a slightly diagonal corridor, 
and we are standing on top of batteries there, but it doesn't matter because you generally wouldn't notice that. As we walk along here, we can see even more batteries along the side of this corridor as our main source of power. But we do have this doorway here. If we open it up, now this is kind of amazing. I like this script. It's a forced airlock script where if I open it up and try and open this door, no matter how much I try, that door is not going to open until this door closes. So if you notice if I open that one, we get a red light. Closing it gives me the green light stating I can now open up this door and head on out inside there, which is what we saw earlier in the video. So coming back inside, once again, I can't open that door until that door has either been manually closed or the script has taken over and closed it for us. Moving along to the middle of the ship, we come to the programmable blocks and a little split of where we can go. The programmable blocks contain the auto door and airlock script, which was what I was talking about. We got the simple cruise control, the floor plan script and the automatic LCD screens. So we've got a, quite a few little scripts in there. There is no spare little programmable blocks for you to do whatever with because this contains everything you generally need. We got an air vent in this room so we're nice and oxygenated and we got a couple of cryopods for the quick recharge and the medical bay to spawn ourselves on. Moving up the steps here, we can then come through to another double door, which will take us to the hangar, yes. So this is our hangar, so we get four small ships and perhaps a medium ship into the middle there, if you wanted to bring it along with you. So we've got these connectors on both sides. There is the door of how we can go through the opposite side. And then we have these lovely little decorations going around these little edge bits. So we've got ramps there and then windows. What I've done is destroyed one of the blocks here so we can see behind it because it's quite well hidden. We get an oxygen tank and a little vent there to ensure this area here is all oxygenated so we can breathe in here should you wish. However, you will need to disable the oxygen by coming over to one of these floor buttons. So we just turn off the oxygen and then open up the doors. Opening up the doors here, we've got quite a tight space to get the ships through. So it's going to be a very small ship, very thin ship, should I say, that will have to come through here and dock in. But it is there if you want to fit in a small little fighter or scout ship, should you wish to do that. Moving along to this side, let's go further back into the ship. We get to the main engines, essentially, where we have modules, we've got refineries, we've got assemblers, we've got hydrogen tanks and all that. Basically everything we need to make sure this thing is functional and usable as you travel through space. Going up through here, we've got some more basic refineries. Here are the hydrogen tanks to fuel us. We've got some more modules there and the large... And the large hydrogen thrusters at the very back of the ship. You might notice there are gaps there because yes, there is no oxygen in this part of the ship, hence the double doors. But with that out of the way, let's come down and back to the front of the ship and it will be time to drive it. It's a nice streamlined design of this ship so you don't have to worry about getting lost in a dire emergency. You can just run straight to the back or straight to the front depending on where you want to go. So hopping into the main cockpit, we have got a few things on here which I'm not actually sure what that is so I'm just going to ignore it for now. But yes, bringing up the hut. We've got quite a few options we can go through. Two tabs, in fact. Not as much as the Dark Star, but it's still enough to be functional. So we got our bacon, we got our antenna landing gear, and the manual controls for the connector. We can turn the atmospheric thrusters on and off, and the hydrogen thrusters on and off, depending on the, what you are doing and where you are. We then have number seven. So if I just come around to here and press number seven, we've got manual controls over the hangar doors. And we've got manual controls over the air vents. Pressing at number two, we've got the jump drive. So we can recharge it on and off. We've got the options to jump. In fact, let's go for a little jump right now. Let's go from first person. Actually, third person. I like third person jumping. Let's go for a nice a long jump. Boosh. Good stuff. Nice particle effects on there. How far away did we jump? Quite a long distance. I probably should have read that on the text box. But anyway, moving on. Number three is our hydrogen engines to turn on and off if you want that extra bit of power to alleviate the batteries a little bit. We got our hydrogen tanks to turn on and off and the oxygen tanks. 
we cut our refineries, we cut our assemblies, and the Gatling guns. And that is it for the outside and what it can do in the main cockpit. Let's go and give it a little test with its flight. What can it do? So moving forwards, we've got a reasonable amount of thrust there. It's pretty fast actually. Stopping speeds, again, it's very good for a large ship. Going left, going right is generally what I expect from a large ship. Not too great on the left and right, and the up and down. Well, actually, the up is fantastic, but that would generally be for lifting off from planets or lifting off from a station. So you kind of need that upward thrust to uh, get you away. It's got some very meaty controls if I was to move my mouse around here, but that's what you expect from a large ship. Pressing F10 and finding the Albatross. There it is. This ship weighs in at 3,742 large blocks, which is a fairly big ship. Not the biggest, it's not crazy, but for what it offers, it is a large ship and is a very useful ship to have around. But as for that, that is basically it for this video. It will be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with this jump ship yourself. And I'll be back with another showcase video some point soon. Bye bye.